Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Tory MSP Murdo Fraser has said now that these revelations from various people have been uh, coming out at the UK COVID inquiry, he says it's time for the Scottish COVID inquiry to be reconvened and these people can be got back in and asked more searching and relevant questions now that certain things have been made public and that they know the sort of things that the areas that they want to concentrate on and get the more detailed answers. They can make it more pertinent for the people of Scotland, for example. And of course, they can delve much deeper into some of the shadiness that was going on. Uh, that they, and now, of course, people are prepared to talk. Of course, the likes of Liz Lloyd, uh, Jason Leach and Gregor Smith having admitted what they have. And of course, the revelationary um, claims by uh, Professor Woolhouse that the whole thing was unnecessarily entirely. These are things that can be asked of much more detail. He describes these people, the Liz Lloyds, the Leeches, the Smiths and that, as a shifty click. And I think that sums up that, you know, that group perfectly. But of course, there's others that that shifty click can encompass. We're thinking, of course, obviously Sturgeon. We're looking at uh, Freeman uh, and definitely Hamza Yousaf as well, himself, as well as others. But we'll take a look at this to see why uh, it does need to happen and why Murdo Fraser is bang on about reopening the inquiry. Here goes. So here we are. Demands are made for Nicola Sturgeon's shifty clique who betrayed the COVID bereaved to be held to account by MSPs. This is the reopening of the Scottish um, COVID-19 committee. Let's get the questions there. This inquiry, uh, which, because the Scottish one was paused while the UK inquiry went on and they want to reconvene it, open it back up again and then ask these now very pertinent up-to-date questions from these people who it seems are willing now to open up that uh, that sheen of protection that uh, Sturgeon had is no longer there. People are willing to talk. People are willing to protect themselves by talking. It's almost as though they've come silently without any conversation to the same conclusion that somebody has to go down and it ain't gonna be me. And then they've all looked at Nicola Sturgeon and silently and in agreement have decided it will be her. No conversations, no phone calls, no messages, just an understanding in the room. Tory MSP Murdo Fraser has urged the Scottish Parliament to reconvene its COVID-19 committee so that it can grill the likes of the former First Minister and Liz Lloyd and Jason Leach and Gregor Smith following their UK COVID inquiry admissions. And we had some startling stuff. Uh, of course, uh, Nippy's always maintained she did not make decisions using WhatsApp. She said there was no government by WhatsApp, as she described it. Yes, she did. After admitting she didn't delete anything uh, because she didn't use it, then she admitted she did use it and she had deleted everything. Um, and then she said, but yes, but there was nothing important on there. And then Liz Lloyd comes up and said, yes, yeah, no, no, we we had lots of conversations. We were making decisions. Uh, we were talking about this and that and the other and all sorts of things. Who do we believe? Well, we know they're all awful people. But if the truth be known, I think I believe Liz Lloyd before I believe Sturgeon. And I think 99% of people will will be of the same mind as mine. Even SNP supporters would rather, I think, believe Liz Lloyd than Sturgeon because the truth is out. She's now been caught lying. And if she's lying about that, guarantee your bottom dollar she's lying about anything else. After all, she was the leader. She ruled with a single hand. You know, she did not allow dissent. Everyone had to agree with the saintly Nick. The buckfast stops here, as she might say. Demands have been made for Nicola Sturgeon's shifty click who portrayed Scotland's COVID bereaved to face MSPs at Holyrood. And the Scottish Tories are calling for the return of the Scottish Parliament's COVID-19 committee so that it can hold the SNP executive to account. Revelations from the UK COVID inquiry sitting in Scotland have shocked the country. We've done videos on some of these. Uh, one the other day, I know it was yesterday, wasn't it? And I sort of at the beginning in the header said this was an astounding revelation. And I went on and I think everyone agreed it was that none of it should ever have happened. It's stunning, isn't it? Um, these have been made with accusations that the nationalists attempted to politicise the pandemic and then that was agreed and people that were involved said yes, that's absolutely what happened. Liz Lloyd herself and um, Gregor Smith both said that. Uh, and of course, so did uh, Woolhouse, Professor Woolhouse. 
Uh, this was shown by Liz Lloyd writing that she wanted to create a Rami with the UK government. Yes, because it's more important to uh, work against your partners rather than with them. Obviously, people will die, but that's a price worth paying, isn't it? As long as it's not your people. Uh, other evidence provided included senior medical figures Sir Gregor Smith and Jason Leach urging officials to delete messages at the end of the day. Now, when you are telling others to do that, that is a conspiracy. That is a chargeable offence. Conspiracy to destroy evidence. Uh, conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Both of those carry life sentences. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll get life, but that's on the books. They can be given life for two different crimes, and they've committed both of them. Uh, senior former, uh, sorry, former senior civil servant Ken Thompson claimed plausible, uh, plausible deniability was his middle name. Uh, Miss Sturgeon and her jo uh, deputy John Swinney also wiped their WhatsApps and claimed this was due to government guidance and that no decisions were made on the platform, which we now know is complete and utter bollocks. Correspondence between the former First Minister and her right-hand woman, Lloyd, revealed they did talk about decisions during the pandemic, including how many people can attend weddings. The messages also showed that Miss Sturgeon was reluctant to follow Boris Johnson's advice because it meant doing something the same as England. That wasn't on the cards. They had to be different, even if it was worse and even if people died, which they did. Scottish Conservative MSP Murdo Fraser has written to Holyrood presiding officer Alan St Johnson to request the re-establishment of the COVID-19 committee, which he served on as a deputy convener, in the wake of the damning evidence this week. And we do want to see this reopened. We want these people dragged back, preferably in chains, sat down and quizzed at great length. The UK COVID inquiry will hear from Miss Sturgeon next week. And boy, are we looking forward to that one, boys and girls. That is going to be popcorn. I can he remember. It wasn't me. It was a big boy did it and ran away to Westminster. Uh, they'll also be hearing from Gene Freeman, Mr Swinney and Kate Forbes. Oh boy, is Forbesy in the mood to drop them all in it, I wonder. What will she say? That's going to be one for the books as well. Uh, Mr Fraser accused the SNP of systemic deletion of WhatsApp messages along with taking decisions for purely political reasons, which they did and they've admitted to. They did these things because they wanted to be different, not because it was beneficial to the people of Scotland. And unfortunately, people will have died because of those decisions. So undoubtedly... Her decisions killed people. That makes her a killer. I'm not saying a murderer. That's a different thing and I'm not charging her. But if she made a decision that resulted in the deaths of people, she's responsible. She's killed them by her actions and decisions. He claimed that debased motives underpinned their actions and that a concerted effort to thwart the inquiry meant MSP should get fresh opportunity to hold to account the shifty clique who betrayed bereaved families. He said, I have today written to the presiding officer and the SNP's parliamentary business manager requesting the COVID-19 committee be reconvened to enable MSPs to hold account those at the top of the Scottish government. He said, last week has exposed a cynical charade, the notion that Nicola Sturgeon's government was motivi motivated by the best interests of the Scottish people. And we know now it was not. It was motivated by the best interests of the SNP and of Nicola Sturgeon. Look at me, I'm Scotland's mammy, and you will do as you're told. Liz Lloyd's words in the minutes of the June 2020 Cabinet meeting revealed the toxic truth. We now know that this was a government intent on exploiting the pandemic to foster division with the UK government and then prevent their debased motives being exposed through the industrial-scale deletion of evidence. He says messages. Let's call it what it is. The destruction of evidence. And that is a crime. He says, because of their concerted effort to thwart this inquiry, the shifty click uh, should be uh, questioned again and it must be interrogated at Holyrood. Um, and then it's just the Scottish government was approached for comment, but comment came there none because they dare not comment because they know that if they get the likes of Liz Lloyd up there and asking her again, and this time with what they know, the wrong sort of questions might be asked and the right sort of answers might be given. It's all getting good, isn't it? Listen, next week is the big one. We've got the big hitters next week. And that I am so looking forward to. 
So we'll round off there, we'll finish this, we'll come up, we'll finish the video. But it is all going to be pretty good. I'm going to have to get an extra bag of popcorn or two in to make sure we don't miss it. Coming up. Now, I think we all know in advance, as I say, that Cranky will try not to answer any questions whatsoever. But she will have to be forced to answer some. And when presented with some of the things that have come out, there is no hiding. And so I think it will be excellent. And we do hope that she's tricked into saying something, she reveals something that um, is a crime and that she can immediately be arrested. And if she can be arrested at that point, then other things can come in. And of course, we know she's lying. And of course, we, we know as well, actually, she has committed a crime now. She has destroyed evidence that is undoubtedly a crime. I don't even need to say allegedly. She's admitted it. She's destroyed evidence. Why has she not been arrested? Now, maybe once this, um, this inquiry completes, or at least her part in it, maybe on the day where she walks out of the hearing, the police will be there and they'll snap the old, uh, the old handcuffs on and whisk her down the police station so fast her tiny feet don't touch. You want to hope. Don't suppose it will, but you want to hope. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Do please hit the subscribe button. We are that close. We are like ooh, 30 something away, 32 away, I think. So uh, make the difference. Get there. Let's get to that 10,000. If you're one of the regulars who's yet to hit, do please hit. Let's get up there uh, and hit a massive target. Till next time, stay safe, stay well, stay angry, keep watching. Bye-bye.